Hi, let's look at Data Fusion. Cloud Data Fusion is a fully managed cloud native enterprise data integration service. So it covers the big chunk of ETL processing for you know, massive data sets. It's uh, powered by open source project called CDAP. It's a cask data application platform that Google has adopted to build those pipelines. Now, why is this important? If you come from a big data world, or in fact, even engineering world, you know, the anatomy of any big data application is that as an application developer, building a big data application, you have to, your primary concerns are these following five. Data collection, how you collect the data. Data exploration, how do you explore the data. Data processing, how do you process it? Where do you store it? And then how do you serve it to external clients? This is what a pipeline, this is what a sequential series of events that an application developer goes through to ingest big data application and serve it to external applications or internal applications. If we put it into perspective, on the left side, you have the streams coming, you are fig figuring out the program that is required, you are figuring out the data set that's required, and you're figuring out how do you serve this data. So if I need to call out, what are the three important things uh, to make these applications possible is that first thing you need to worry about the programs. So this is the program section. It's basically how are you going to process the data, whether it's you, you will use MapReduce, whether you will use Spark, whether you will use Flink. And these are, again, all of the open source projects. Similarly, there are a lot of projects for, for different use cases. So the first thing you need to figure out, what is the program? Now, once you figure out that program, you need to figure out how, where would you store that data? Where would you store intermediary data? Where, where would you store the resultant data? Or do you need the data to be landed somewhere so that these programs can use? And when there is a data, there's a big challenge of ACID compatibility relational data, non-relational data, how do you differentiate all of that? So that forms a big chunk here, which is what, how do you define data sets? Then the third part comes is the serving part of it. How do you service this data, whether internally or externally? RPC, JDBC, query, APIs, these, these are all different ways to service that data. So taking these three challenges, what CDAP has done, CDAP has created an abstraction between all of these layers. So if I need to put it in perspective, you have the Hadoop stack, which is the infrastructure part of everything that is required in terms of servers, whether you are using on-prem or cloud-based big data, you have the infrastructure. Then what CDAP has primarily done is that CDAP has taken these problems and created an abstraction layer above all of this. So this is the first abstraction layer, which is about data application. Then there is a second abstraction, which is about the applications. Then there is a third abstraction, which is how to make it accessible to other applications. So if, uh, if we need to summarize it, it's basically CDAP abstraction provides portability by decoupling data and application from the underlying infrastructure. So you're not tightly coupled with infrastructure. You don't need to worry about Spark nodes where this particular data is gonna run. CDAP takes care of that abstraction. So to access and manipulate data, 
you use CDAP data sets. So CDAP basically gives you data sets or you tell CDAP to create those data sets without worrying about the coupling with underlying infrastructure. And especially with OSS servers, each one of these projects, they need their own cluster. Spark needs a cluster, MapReduce needs a cluster, uh, Flink needs a cluster, all of them uh, need a cluster. So it abstracts you away from that. Similarly, when you write your application using CDAP's developer interface and run them inside application con containers, you are completely abstracted from it. And then like, uh, lastly, you know, you build your applications against the CDAP developer APIs. The APIs hide the low level details of individual programming paradigm and also the execution environments. Now, CDAP can be run in three different runtime modes. Distributed CDAP, which is for staging and production, which is uh, highly available. CDAP Sandbox, which lets you develop such massive applications on a developer's laptop, which is very, very handy because when in big data world, developing an application, creating an environment on your local laptop is, is pretty cumbersome. So you have to create your SDFS cluster, then you have to install all of these HBase, Juku, JuKeeper, and uh, have Spark and everything. So CDAP basically gives you a sandbox, which you can use to, and you are, you are confident it's portable to cloud environment, it's portable to any environment because the underlying abstraction is same. Then it also gives you in-memory CDAP for unit testing and continuous integration pipeline. So, you know, it takes care of the CI CD pipelines. Now we talked a lot about this abstraction, what it gives in theory. What does it give you in practice? It's just this self-service UI, which, you know, makes it so easy. So abstract, the complex way of developing application for big data with, with an ETL friendly UI, even also from the traditional days, IBM Informatica and all, um, all those times. So all of those products used to have their own engine. So, you know, the companies will build an UI on top of that. CDAP is an effort to put an umbrella on a variety of OSS technologies, which is open source technology. So what you get is a very simple UI, drag and drop and create your pipelines. Everything is abstracted away for you. Data is a data set in CDAP term that's available to you. Application is again CDAP application and there are APIs available for any of the application to interact with it. Now, this is also being promoted as an hybrid and multi-cloud data integration tool because you can connect to databases on-premises, any other cloud platform, anywhere. It's like a, a, an ETL tool for big data uh, applications. It is used to build a scalable data integration solution. So it can scale on, it, on uh, itself. It will do all of the clean preparation, blending, transfer, transformation of data without worrying about what infrastructure it's running on uh, and who is spinning up that infrastructure. So underneath, under the hood, CDAP, uses, uh, especially on Google ecosystem, it uses data proc cluster. So everything that you see here, it is what we covered as part of data proc. So cloud data proc is used and, and that too again is ephemeral. So you don't have to worry about spinning it up, destroying it down, uh, whenever the job needs to run, it will automatically create that cluster and run it for you. Now, why it's a, uh, it's a very good proposition on Google Cloud. 
It's integrated with Google's big data tools. So stories, data prog, BigQuery, Spanner. So imagine to be able to pick any of the open source programming language, uh, any of the, the execution engine, pull the data from Google Cloud Storage Bucket, push it to BigQuery from an UI, uh, from, from a self-service um, UI. It's, it, 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 it makes the life really easy for application developers. It has enterprise-grade security enabled because if you are building something custom, you always worry about the security in terms of Kerberos configuration or RBAC control. All of that, because it's on Google ecosystem, is embedded as part of the product architecture. It provides you metadata in lineage integration. Lineage is, is very important for, for data governance use cases, tracking down where the data came from, how it was transformed. So it provides you all of that out of the box. And then it has a built-in connectors for modern and legacy systems. So not only you are connecting to cloud native systems, but also SAP or any of the ERP based legacy systems. Uh, it can go there, do that uh, interaction and let you have an icon in the, on this UI page, which uh, visibly gives you data processing pipeline. So now let's look at uh, data fusion cluster. How does it look like on Google Cloud Console? So if you come to GCP Console, data fusion is under big data. So you can find it here under big data. Then what do you spin up in data fusion is an instance. So for this example, I have the instance spun up here. There are different editions. I've taken the enterprise edition. Then you get an option to click on view instance. If you click on this view instance, this will take you to the UI front of Cloud Data Fusion. This is how the UI looks like. It's again got uh, Wrangler and, and different ways you can do in terms of pipelines. How does the pipeline look like and how you work on it is you click on this hamburger menu. Uh, there are pipelines. You can click on studio. So the, uh, the studio brings up a canvas with different, uh, you know, connectors or transforms in, in sort of categories. So you have source where it is Microsoft on-premise databases, Google, AWS stuff, because it, it's, it's, it's trying to cater to multi and hybrid uh, cloud technologies. Then you have the transform section. There's a different kind of transforms you can do. You have analytics section, you have a sync where as a target, you can put in everything. And it's very easy to just uh, click on, uh, on the icon and it will bring it onto the canvas. Now, if I look at uh, or what else you can do is on this, you can uh, preview data. So during the whole process, you can preview data between different stages. These things are called nodes and you can add as many nodes you want. So like a JSON formatter, a JavaScript. So you can add as many nodes you want. Come out of it. And when you hover your mouse over these, you can connect them together and you can have multiple flows going in different directions. Uh, let's say if I pick a sync as in spanner, you can connect it together like this. So it's basically, it gives you a complete uh, freedom in terms of different ways of transforming data. Is it uh, forks and joins, um, any kind of transformation. And also you can schedule your pipeline. You can, uh, of course, when you deploy, as, as I mentioned earlier, underneath uh, the pipeline, it uses data proc 
to execute your pipeline. Then you can import and export. Also to note down, you can have data pipelines as batch as well as real time. So if I go to hamburger menu, there's another thing you can see, the namespace. So there's a concept of namespace. You organize all of your pipelines under a namespace. And if I click on control center, this gives you all of the different jobs that's been there. Let me walk you through one of the data pipeline that I've created. And what this pipeline is trying to do is this pipeline is picking data from Google Cloud Storage. Uh, it's doing some sort of wrangling, which is transforming that CSP file or converting the file into CSP format, applying some JavaScript transformation and pushing the data into BigQuery. If I need to look at it, uh, each one of these nodes have, a, you know, when you hover on it, it will have the properties uh, flash button which you can click on and will open up the properties now this is in a deployed state so the screens look like where you can run it if you need to edit it you need to create another uh, pipeline so if i put it in an edit mode then this is the familiar uh, uh, studio look you have everything on the left categorized now if I do the Wrangler properties, if I click on Wrangler properties, what it is, it's it's basically telling me how to, you know, what are the ways you can parse a file into CSV format. So all of these, uh, this has been parsed from, from one file. And in terms of specifying the delimiters and also, there's a lot of transformation that you can do here. You, you can change data types. For this particular case, SSN, I have done the masking data where it, it's only showing you last four character uh, for SSN. Similarly, you can do a lot of things, get rid of columns, uh, change names, combine columns, split columns. Now, what uh, where this is becomes very useful that it's called directives, which is like a recipe that uh, Cloud Data Fusion creates, which you can copy and paste, paste next time in the Wrangler window or the directive window so that you don't have to do every time. You have an option to validate every time. And this is exactly like any ETL tool you have worked on before. On the left side, you have input schema. On the right side, you have output schema. Now, same if open the BigQuery, you have the similar interface where you put down the name of your data set and the table where it will either insert, update, or absurd the data, and then you have multiple options. So I hope this was this is useful in terms of getting a view of how Cloud Data Fusion looks like. Cloud Data Fusion is really useful for visualizing the data pipeline and makes the job of application developers uh, very easy and also um, with the release of new products like data stream where you can stream data out of your databases and you can plug that in with any of the processing and push data into bigquery spanner or somewhere else this this, this could be really useful thank you